Well, hello and welcome. This is Dr. John Mason. I'm calling in, obviously, from Yosemite Valley. Uh, I need to ask you a question because you may know people that have some fear and some anxiety, maybe even anger with what's going on with the pandemic that the whole world is experiencing. I have with me today Gene Golden. He is a Tai Chi master. He's been a master for 30 years. He's really learned something about the energy of this thing. And we have both been guided to come to Bellingham, Washington to meet one another and to create some information so that maybe you can experience this pandemic or the virus itself as it, through a different filter. It may not be the enemy. It may not be the thing that makes you as angry or as fearful or as anxious as you can, you, you can be. So let's, let, let me just bring Gene in and say, hi, Gene, how are you doing? Hi, John. Pleasure to be here. And lovely in, Yosemite Valley, <laughs> at least on your end. <laughs> yes. Can, can, can you give us a, a little bit of a, a, a background on uh, where you're coming from and where you got this information or knowledge from your Tai Chi work? Well, this is, I have to admit, probably one of the strangest experiences of my life because literally some years ago, I felt connected to, um, by some information. And Tai Chi itself is, is a system of, of stillness in motion is what they refer to it as. And I think that state just got me in a calm, mentally open state of not creating too many of my own ripples, uh, obscuring information that might come my way. And so in this state, I felt contacted by these statements that came to me that there was going to be an event. There was going to be some event occurring that I had to be very aware, pay attention, that timing was critical, and that I had to act in a very specific timing. And literally, three, four years went by, and now I find myself in the middle of this event that's occurring, and it is super clear to me that this is what I had to act within and catch the timing of, and the message that came to me was basically that this virus was not inflicted upon the population, is not some sort of retribution, is actually an answer to the entreaties of, of, of countless souls of our population who have not been able to feed themselves, care for themselves, provide medical assistance for their loved ones, for their children. And it was this global sort of help us, help us. And this is what it appears to me, at least, that the universe sent back almost something that had to be solved to get to the help portion of it. And um, right now, a lot of the reaction is for people to be isolated, and it's really a time that that's not going to work. It's really a time that people need to start reaching out. That does not mean go out and expose yourself to dangerous situations or to the virus, but it's a time to go inside and find something that's going to be the antidote to the energy of this virus. And that's going to help the cries and the pleas of the people that are calling out for help and assistance. And the earth itself really needs to be supported. And the wellness and the cleanliness of the air, the water, this is all decrying that attention needs to be paid. And once it is, this virus is going to be affected by the positivity of just the souls starting to reach out. And I don't know about the rest of the country, but here in Bellingham, there's a tremendous outpouring of support and people really trying to help one another as if they're almost getting the message on their own and seeing what needs to be done. And I'm just trying to reach out on a more global level that if we reach the tipping point of enough consciousness is getting why the virus was sent, 
to unite us in a heartfelt outpouring of caring and of love, my belief is this is going away. It will be done. Otherwise, why was I even contacted with this information so many years back that this situation will come, there will be an event and I have to pay attention and I have to act and the timing is critical and this coronavirus has embodies all of those precise elements. So we, what we need to do is perhaps <clears throat> look at the, the virus and how it's affecting us globally through a different filter perhaps that it's some sort of gift that's creating awareness and the opportunity for us to step back, become more conscious or aware, and maybe find ways that we can work together and then not only help mankind, but you're talking also about being of service to cleaning up the planet and giving us a, a healthier environment because maybe the universe is saying, we've, we've soiled the nest so much that we need uh, something to grab our attention. And, and this virus may be uh, uh, the, the, thing, the distraction that's causing us to step back from our busy, crazy lifestyles to do it differently. It, 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 is that a fair thing to say? That's spot on, John. Um, I believe right now, even quantum physicists are saying that the universe is generating itself via fractals. These fractals, are run by two energy sources, a positive energy field and negative energy field. And we're involved in a, a fractal right now on our planet that the field that is dominant is of basically finance, power. Um, these are the forces that are controlling what's happening on the planet. And it's rather negative in its, in its output because it's a constant striving for more, for greater profits, for more resources. And as it begins to wear down on the planet's basis to supply these resources, it begins to get a little tight for people to be able to survive. I believe that the opposing energy field, the positive energy field, is one of people creating, growing things. People who live where there's farming and most of, most of the planet, people live in simple communities where they, they're bonded to the earth, they're living off of the earth. Feeding into that earth is generating a cleaning of the resources, a cleaning of the airs and the waters, and basically people investing in that is going to start pulling away from the absorbing and wearing down of resources and start replenishing. And I think you, you mentioned it just perfectly was this is a gift. It's a gift designed, I mean, already part of the gift is it has totally focused the attention of humanity. We are paying attention. And now what's the message we're sending? That we're frightened, that we're quarantining ourselves. I mean, that is not going to resolve anything. That is not going to end this. But with this attention coming together, and people seeing what needs to be done. And if this was sent as a message, it is very important, critically important, what do we send back as our response to this message? And my belief is we have to start. We have to be the love. You know, that's the thing that is missing. <laughs> the love is, is, is hard to find these days. And I think opening the hearts and being less in the mind and of the ego and power and of getting and amassing, that it's really a time to be of the heart and to be giving and to be sharing. And my belief is once this is starting to occur in sufficient numbers, this virus will just, it's done its work. We get it. It'll turn itself off. So, so, so we have to be present, we have to be quiet, we have to go inward and be aware, develop our consciousness, but be very heart-centered. You, you want us to 
to be the love and take action, not necessarily run in circles with our hair and fire with all of the anxiety and the fear and maybe the anger that is developing as our lifestyles have been impinged upon, but we need to look at this as a gift and a challenge and look for the joy and the positivity and then actually put it into action by sharing service with one another in humanity and also being even better um, caretakers of our earth. Is that, is, is that fair to say? I totally believe that. That's exactly why I feel I was called to be aware of an event that was of supreme importance and that I had something to do. I had some message to get out and the timing had to be exact. And I feel with this virus that if one waits, if one you know, doesn't really act at the precise moment, its ability to replicate and get so large and be so damaging. I mean, I'm really feeling that society and civilization could start taking a very, very heavy hit that even when it ends, it might not ever be the way it once was. And I think the call to catch the timing early to me was before it gets out of hand, before millions begin to die. Um, let's try this. Let's get out there. And I find already many people on their own seem to be coming to this conclusion that they're out there meditating for planetary well-being. They're trying to help people. Many, many actions um, here in Bellingham. There's food boxes on some of the trails that are over flowing with food they can't fit the food that they're giving to people who might be in need in the box this is exactly the message this is exactly the energy and the information that needs to get out there and we will see if it's working we'll see short order very short order a week two weeks three weeks if this expands out to the millions hopefully to the billions my feeling is this virus could be ended before the beginning of May. And that's my hope and that's my goal. So, so you're, you're asking people, call to action. You want people to do what they can to be of service to other human beings and to do some good and positive things in the world. And you think that that loving, positive energy can counteract the 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 virus or the source of the virus that's been bestowed upon the seven and a half billion of us that uh, inhabit this world. Exactly. And as I say, there's two energies. One energy is feeding the virus and another energy is going to starve the virus. And right now it's doing quite well in the fear-based atmosphere that it's largely being presented with. And once it begins to be a love-based atmosphere, not that that will kill it, but it just won't feed it. It'll just turn somewhere else looking for the energy for it to thrive upon. So my call out to people everywhere is let's start doing this. Start going within your hearts and seeing if you can just bask in the feeling of love and send that out and with concern and compassion and caring for the planet. You know, support the people that are local, support the people that you know and that you can help and see if this doesn't actually affect so, what is happening. And if it does, then you know we've hit on it. Let's do more of it. Let's get more people pulled into this and eradicate it, which is really what I feel I've been called to do. How would I know about this three years, four years before these, this even ever occurred? It was through whatever, in the stillness and quietness of moving and calming my mind, these information, this information kept appearing that there was something I had to be aware of and to, to act within the timing of. Okay, so this is Gene Golden. Uh, in a minute, I'm gonna ask people how they can get in touch with you. If you could give them that information, 
but he has 30 years of experience of working with energy and martial arts and Tai Chi. He's been gifted with some very specific and urgent information for us so that we might be able to change the world, to change some of the things that are occurring in this really interesting, maybe dangerous or even scary times for some of us. And we want to see if we can use it as a lesson, as a gift to make the changes that would make this a better world. Now, how do, how do people get in touch with you if they want to do that, Gene? Um, people can reach me at my email, which is goldentaichi.com. Um, uh, excuse me, that's my website, Golden's Tai Chi, Golden's with an S, uh, taichi.com. But my email, sorry about that, is uh, golden tai chi at hotmail.com, which is G O L D E N T A I C H I at hotmail.com. I'd love to hear from folks, and if you have any questions, I'll do my best to uh, respond. And and I really want to emphasize, if, if this has been information that's been of value to you, if it's triggered you to look at things differently, we really want you to share this video. We need to get the word out. We need all the help that we can so that other people might hear it and respond in the most positive way so that we can do this as a unifying force globally. Really appreciate your time and your attention. Gene, thank you so much for coming on. You too, John, and let me appeal again to everybody. We're really trying to hit critical mass, so spread this word and do what you can and find some love and goodness in your heart and spread it out, share it out, and see what the response is. You'll know within days if it's working. Good. Thank you.